The Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code was enacted on May 28, 2016, a day marked as a significant milestone in India's financial legislative landscape. Prior to IBC 2016, India's insolvency and bankruptcy domain was entangled in a myriad of outdated and overlapping laws. This old framework was not only fragmented but also lacked the efficiency and timeliness crucial for insolvency resolutions. Businesses mired in financial distress often found themselves ensnared in long-drawn legal battles, eroding the value of assets awaiting resolution. On the global stage, India's insolvency framework was falling short of international standards, impacting its attractiveness as an investment destination. The World Bank's Ease of Doing Business Index had persistently highlighted the need for India to improve its insolvency resolution process. The government, acknowledging these challenges and with a vision to enhance investor confidence, ease of doing business, and financial stability, introduced the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code 2016. This new legislation was aimed at consolidating the existing framework into a single, unified law, ensuring a time-bound resolution process, and maximizing the value of assets of insolvent firms. The Pre-IBC Landscape Before the dawn of the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code, the Indian insolvency regime was fragmented, governed by multiple laws and statutes. These laws were often found to be woefully inadequate in addressing the complex nature of insolvency and bankruptcy matters in a rapidly modernizing economy. The key legislations included the Presidency Towns Insolvency Act of 1909, the Provincial Insolvency Act of 1920, the Sick Industrial Companies Act of 1985, the Recovery of Debts Due to Banks and Financial Institutions Act of 1993, among others. Each of these laws operated in silos with its own set of procedures and governing bodies, leading to a landscape ripe for jurisdictional conflicts and procedural delays. The old framework was often criticized for its lack of a time-bound resolution process. Insolvency proceedings dragged on for years, eroding the value of the distressed assets and diminishing the likelihood of successful resolution. The protracted and cumbersome process not only deterred investors but also affected India's standing in the global business community. The World Bank's Ease of Doing Business Index consistently ranked India poorly in the parameter of resolving insolvency, indicating a dire need for reform. It was a milieu of systemic delays and judicial inefficiencies that made the call for a unified, modern, and efficient insolvency framework louder. The stakeholders yearned for a system that could ensure a swift and fair resolution of insolvency cases, thereby safeguarding the interests of creditors, investors, and promoting an environment conducive to economic growth. The Genesis of IBC 2016 The journey towards a unified insolvency framework began with the drafting of the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code. The government, acknowledging the urgent need for a comprehensive reform, took the initiative to bring about a legislation that could meet the modern-day challenges of insolvency and bankruptcy. Extensive consultations were held with various stakeholders, including legal experts, financial institutions, industry bodies, and the public, to draft a legislation that would address the myriad issues plaguing the insolvency domain. The Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code 2016 was introduced in the Lok Sabha in December 2015 and after rigorous deliberation and amendments, it was eventually passed by both houses of the parliament. The President of India gave his assent on May 28, 2016, marking the enactment of a legislation that promised to overhaul the insolvency landscape of India. The IBC 2016 was envisioned to provide a single, unified framework to resolve insolvency and bankruptcy matters in a time-bound manner. The code aimed at promoting entrepreneurship, availability of credit, and balancing the interests of all stakeholders, including the government and the public. The key objectives of the IBC 2016 were clear to consolidate and amend the laws relating to reorganization and insolvency resolution, to maximize the value of assets of individuals and entities, to promote entrepreneurship and availability of credit, to balance the interests of all stakeholders involved. The anticipation surrounding IBC 2016 was palpable. Policymakers, industry experts, and the business community were hopeful that this legislation would usher in a new era of financial discipline, transparency, and efficiency, setting India on a path of economic resilience and growth. Key Provisions of IBC 2016 The Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code 2016 is a well-thought-out piece of legislation with a myriad of provisions aimed at streamlining the insolvency resolution process. Here are its key provisions elucidated in detail. Initiation of Insolvency Process The Code provides a clear mechanism for initiating the insolvency process. It allows a financial creditor, operational creditor, or the debtor itself to initiate the process in case of a default. The threshold for default is defined in the code, providing clarity on when the insolvency process can be triggered. 
Regulatory Infrastructure IBC 2016 established the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Board of India IBBI, to oversee and regulate the insolvency process. It also paved the way for the establishment of insolvency professional agencies, insolvency professionals, and information utilities to ensure a structured and efficient resolution process. Committee of Creditors COC, The code mandates the formation of a committee of creditors, comprising all financial creditors. The COC plays a pivotal role in the decision-making process during insolvency resolution, ensuring that the interests of the creditors are adequately represented. Time-bound resolution. A hallmark feature of IBC 2016 is its emphasis on a time-bound resolution process. The code mandates the completion of the insolvency resolution process within 180 days, extendable by a further 90 days under certain circumstances, ensuring that the process is expedited and the asset value is preserved. Resolution professional. A resolution professional is appointed to manage the affairs of the debtor during the insolvency process. The resolution professional has the responsibility of presenting a resolution plan to the COC for approval, ensuring compliance with the provisions of the code. Resolution plan. A resolution plan, once approved by the COC, is submitted to the National Company Law Tribunal, NCLT, for final approval. The plan outlines the manner in which the debtor's assets will be dealt with to resolve insolvency and pay off the creditors. Liquidation. In cases where a resolution plan is not approved, the debtor's assets are liquidated to pay off the creditors. The code provides a clear hierarchy for the distribution of proceeds from liquidation, ensuring that all stakeholders are treated fairly. The IBC 2016, through these provisions, provides a holistic framework for addressing insolvency and bankruptcy in India. Its emphasis on time-bound resolution, maximization of asset value, and balancing the interests of all stakeholders represents a significant stride towards fostering a conducive environment for economic growth and investment. IBC 2016, a paradigm shift. The Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code 2016 is more than just a piece of legislation, it's a significant shift in India's financial and legal landscape. Here's a closer look at the facets of this paradigm shift. From debtor-centric to creditor-centric, prior to IBC 2016, the insolvency regime in India was skewed in favor of debtors, often leading to protracted resolution processes. IBC 2016 redressed this balance by empowering creditors, particularly financial creditors, in the insolvency resolution process, thus ensuring that the rights and interests of creditors are adequately protected. Time-bound resolution. The mandate for a time-bound resolution process is one of the cornerstones of IBC 2016, aimed at ensuring the swift resolution of insolvency cases to preserve the value of distressed assets. The stipulated timeline of 180 days, extendable by a further 90 days under certain circumstances, represents a significant departure from the erstwhile protracted processes that often led to erosion of asset value. Transparency and Accountability IBC 2016 introduced a level of transparency and accountability that was hitherto lacking in the insolvency domain. The roles and responsibilities of various stakeholders, including the Resolution Professional, Committee of Creditors, and the Adjudicating Authority, are clearly delineated, thus fostering a more structured and predictable insolvency process. Boost to ease of doing business By streamlining the insolvency process, IBC 2016 has significantly improved India's standing in the global ease of doing business rankings. The World Bank acknowledged the positive impact of IBC 2016 by improving India's rank in the resolving insolvency parameter, thus showcasing the code's contribution to enhancing the business environment in India. Promotion of Entrepreneurship IBC 2016, by providing a clear and time-bound exit mechanism, has fostered a conducive environment for entrepreneurship. The assurance of a structured resolution process in case of business failure reduces the risk aversion among entrepreneurs and promotes entrepreneurial activity. Enhanced Credit Discipline The streamlined insolvency process under IBC 2016 has instilled a culture of credit discipline among borrowers. The fear of losing control of their enterprises compels debtors to honor their credit obligations, thus fostering a culture of financial prudence and discipline. Boost to investor confidence The clear, predictable, and time-bound process under IBC 2016 has bolstered investor confidence, making India a more attractive destination for investments. The assurance of a swift resolution process in case of insolvency enhances the risk-return profile of investments, thus attracting both domestic and foreign investments. The transformative impact of the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code 2016 has been far-reaching. By addressing the long-standing issues in the insolvency domain, IBC 2016 has not only reshaped the insolvency framework but also contributed significantly towards improving the business environment, promoting entrepreneurship, and fostering financial discipline in India. Amendments over the years
As with any pioneering legislation, the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code 2016 has undergone several amendments to address emerging challenges and to better align with the evolving economic landscape. Here are some notable amendments. Increase in threshold for initiating insolvency, to protect micro, small, and medium enterprises, MSMEs, from being pushed into insolvency for minor defaults, the threshold for initiating insolvency was increased. Introduction of prepackaged insolvency resolution process, aiming to provide a faster and cost-effective alternative to the existing insolvency resolution process, the concept of prepackaged insolvency was introduced. Ring fencing of successful resolution applicants, amendments were made to protect successful resolution applicants from prior liabilities, ensuring that they can revive the stressed assets without any unforeseen liabilities. Clarification on the rights of financial and operational creditors, amendments clarified the rights and priorities of financial and operational creditors, ensuring fair treatment of all stakeholders. Cross-border insolvency, provisions for dealing with cross-border insolvency were introduced, aiming to provide a framework for dealing with overseas assets of a bankrupt entity and insolvency resolution of foreign entities with assets in India. Insolvency and liquidation proceedings for financial service providers, special provisions were introduced for insolvency and liquidation proceedings of financial service providers, recognizing the unique nature of these entities. Home buyers as financial creditors, in a significant move, home buyers were brought within the ambit of financial creditors, thus allowing them to participate in the insolvency resolution process. These amendments reflect the government's commitment to continually refine and enhance the IBC framework, ensuring it remains robust, effective, and aligned with the evolving economic and financial landscape. IBC in Action, Case Studies the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code 2016 has been put to the test in numerous high-profile insolvency cases. These case studies provide a pragmatic insight into how the IBC framework operates in real-world scenarios. Let's delve into a few notable cases. Essa Steel Case Essa Steel, one of India's major steel producers, was among the initial big cases under the IBC framework. The resolution process was a litmus test for IBC, showcasing the code's ability to handle large insolvencies. Bhushan Steel Case Bhushan Steel's insolvency resolution was one of the fastest and the firm was acquired by Tata Steel, demonstrating the efficiency and effectiveness of the IBC in resolving insolvencies and ensuring continuity of business operations. Jet Airways Case Jet Airways insolvency marked a significant case in the aviation sector. The resolution process is ongoing, illustrating the complexities involved in insolvency resolutions across different sectors. Antec Auto Case Antec Auto's resolution process highlighted the challenges and the importance of a well-structured resolution plan to ensure the revival of distressed assets. Ruchi Soya Case The successful resolution and acquisition of Ruchi Soya by Patanjali showcased how IBC can facilitate the revival of companies and protect jobs. These case studies underline the practical application and the challenges of the IBC framework. They also showcase the potential of IBC 2016 in facilitating the resolution of insolvencies, protecting jobs, and ensuring the continuation of business operations, thereby contributing to the overall economic stability and growth. Future Implications and Conclusion The journey of the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code 2016 from its inception to its application in resolving high-profile insolvencies has been a testament to India's commitment to creating a robust financial and legal framework. Here are some future implications and a conclusion on the impact of IBC 2016. Continual refinement. As economic landscapes evolve, continual refinement of the IBC is imperative to ensure it remains a potent tool for insolvency resolution, reflecting global best practices. Cross-border insolvency. Addressing cross-border insolvency with comprehensive legislation will enhance India's position as a favorable investment destination and resolve complexities involving foreign creditors and assets. Digital transformation. Embracing digital transformation can further streamline the insolvency resolution process, making it more efficient and accessible. Awareness and education. Spreading awareness and educating stakeholders about the provisions and processes under IBC is crucial for its effective implementation and to foster a culture of financial prudence. Strengthening institutional capacities, fortifying the capacities of institutions involved in insolvency resolution, including the NCLT, IBBI, and insolvency professionals, is essential for ensuring the effectiveness and integrity of the insolvency resolution process. In conclusion, the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code 2016 has marked a significant milestone in India's financial legal framework. Its enactment has not only streamlined the insolvency resolution process but also instilled a culture of financial discipline, enhanced investor confidence, and contributed to improving India's ease of doing business.
The journey ahead involves continual refinement and strengthening of the IBC framework to ensure it remains aligned with the evolving economic dynamics and continues to bolster India's financial ecosystem. Thank you for joining us on this comprehensive exploration of the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code 2016. For more such engaging legal discussions, stay tuned to Legal Budget. And if you found value in today's video, do not forget to like, share, and comment below. Your interaction greatly supports our channel. And of course, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to stay updated with more such content. Until next time, keep the legal budget going.